Today, I have a very useful lesson for you. It is a grammar lesson and it is all about adverbs. What's up guys? My name is Wes. This is Interactive English, which is the place that you want to be to practice and improve your English. And today I have a grammar lesson for you. It is about adverbs, but specifically it is about adverb placement. Where, where do we put these tricky little adverbs? So this, this is a very useful lesson because we use adverbs all the time and it, it's actually, it's also a common question that we get from you guys about, well, if I'm going to use an adverb, where, where does it go? Because you sometimes see them at the beginning of the sentence, you sometimes see them in the middle, and you sometimes see them at the end of the sentence. So I'm going to talk to you about some different types of adverbs and where you would most commonly find them in the sentence. Now, before we jump into it, I want you to say hello, say what's up in the chat. I just want to hear from you guys. Tell me your name. Tell me where you're from because we just love hearing from you. So hello, Amano, Sumaya, Unisam, um, Mirieta, Mushkan, Ashan, Emmanuel, Pablo. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome. Thank you guys for joining me today for this super awesome lesson. So let, let's just begin with something simple and, and easy. And I just want to tell you quickly, well, what are adverbs? So adverbs, it's a word or a phrase that modifies the meaning of an adjective, a verb, or other adverb expressing manner, place, time, or degree. That, that in a nutshell is what an adverb is. It is a part of speech. Now, I mentioned already that you might find it in one of three positions, and these are the three that I'm going to talk to you about today. So you could find it in the initial position, which when I say that, I'm talking about the first word of the sentence. You can find it in the middle position, which I would say the middle is anywhere between the first word and the last word. It gets a little, it can get a little confusing what, where the middle is, but in general, anywhere between the first word and the last word. And then you could also have it in the final position, which is at the very end of a sentence, or you could even say the end of your main clause. So. The, the goal behind this lesson is not to think like, well, I'm going to memorize this and, and then it's, it's just going to be done. I'm going to know this information because when you talk about adverb placements, it can be confusing, it can be tricky, and it's more something that you just need to practice and become familiar with, and then you'll just naturally start using it correctly in your writing or when you're having a conversation. So it's not about trying to learn necessarily the rules, because like I said, the, you know, you can have adverbs in more than one place. It's more so becoming comfortable with the type of adverb it is and then where you might find that in the sentence. So as we go through this, as we talk about these adverbs and where they are placed, I'm going to give you some general rules of thumb. So the first one, the first rule of thumb that I have for you is to stress the adverb, to, to give it a little more emphasis you place it before the subject in the initial position. So in that case, it would be the first word of the sentence. And it depends not only, again, on the type of adverb, but also what you're trying to do, what you want to emphasize. So for example, check out that sentence down below. Repeatedly, I called you, but you didn't answer. So when I say it like that, I have a little bit more of an emphasis on repeatedly. That, that is important information because I could use that adverb in the middle position. I could say, I called you repeatedly, but you didn't answer. And in that case, you, you understand it, but that, that's not the part of the information that it wants to be highlighted. So if we put it at the beginning, you're, you're kind of giving that adverb a little bit more stress. Repeatedly, I called you, but you didn't answer. So that, that is useful information. That's something to keep in mind is, you know, when you see it at the beginning of a sentence, it's going to give a, a little bit more emphasis 
to that adverb and, and because it's a little bit more important. It's something you want to emphasize. So keep that in mind. And with that, let's talk about some of the adverbs that you will find in the initial position. And if you're just joining us today, we're talking about adverb placement and where they go, which part of the sentence. So in the initial position, I first want to talk about conjunctive adverbs. Now, what a conjunctive adverb is, is it joins a statement to the preceding clause or sentence. So if you want to know what that means, it's basically, it's a word that, that's connecting information from the sentence before. An example, like these words right here, they're also referred to as signpost. Uh, you may have already seen it. We did a lesson on signpost and listening for these words because they help guide us through the presentation or help guide us through a conversation. And it's important to be able to listen to these words. So all of these words right here would be conjunctive adverbs. However, moreover, also, next, finally, therefore. And the, they would come at the very first part of the sentence and it's connecting information with, with the sentence before. Now, you may not be able to see it, but I wanted to give you a little bit uh, information up there. You might notice that asterisk. And what that says, it, it may also be used in the middle position. So again, just because you see however or moreover, most of the time you will find it at the beginning of the sentence in that initial position. However, <laughs> it may also be in the middle position. It's not as common, but grammatically you could use it there. So let's look at an example right down here. First, uh, and first we learn the meaning of these adverbs. Next, we learn where they go. So we learn the meaning and next we learn where they go. The first and next, again, those are conjunctive adverbs. They are time order words because it's telling us the sequence of things. And this is, this is a little more basic. I think most of you are familiar with that when you're talking about, when you're telling a story, first, next, then, after that, those are conjunctive adverbs and they often come at the very beginning of a sentence. So. Let's look at another type of adverb and where they go. So you can also have evaluative or, or viewpoint adverbs. And these are adverbs that show your, your attitude, your opinion, or your point of view about something, some information. Again, right here, you might notice they may also be used in the middle position. But, but most of the time when you're having a conversation or if you're reading a book you, and you see these adverbs, they will, they will often come in the initial position. Actually, obviously, apparently, personally, fortunately, and interestingly. Let's, let's, uh, let's practice this right now. I want you to use the adverb interestingly and tell me something. Tell me your opinion. Interestingly, Blah, 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 blah. What happens? What is something that is interesting um, or that happened that was interesting? Interestingly, something happened. So practice using that. Write, us, write a sentence in the chat. Give us an example because it's always good to keep practicing what we've learned. And I gave you an example right there. Personally, you're kind of giving your opinion about something. Personally, I think you should hit that like button down below, all right? Um, I'm kind of trying to look at it right now. Uh, that would be my personal opinion of, about what, what's going on. I think you guys should hit that like button. So again, if you can see, write, write, write an example sentence. I'm, I'm waiting to see if anybody uh, <laughs> can, can give us that. That is an interestingly... Oh, you could say again at the at the beginning. Interestingly, um, you know that that was <laughs> interestingly that was a great question. Um, interestingly, I have time to watch your lesson. Perfect. Interestingly, um, I was about to watch a movie. Exactly. You're giving us some of that information. So. These are evaluative viewpoint adverbs. You, you often find them in that initial position. Let's look at our next rule of thumb. So if we're talking about uh, the adverb having little to no emphasis, if there's little to no emphasis on the adverb, 
place it after the subject and before the verb in the middle position. Again, the middle position, it, it's that is not always the specific position for that. The middle position can, can kind of be a range, but often uh, you would find uh, the adverb between the, uh, between the subject and the verb, it's considered the middle position, and when it's there, it's just not emphasized. Like I said, if it's in the initial position, it gives it a little bit of emphasis. So uh, my example sentence is, Wes sometimes eats an entire Milka bar before going to bed. Um, sadly enough, yes, this is true. This is one of my guilty pleasures. And if you don't know what a guilty pleasure is, it is something that you do that feels good, which is the pleasure part, but you know that you shouldn't be doing it and you feel guilty about it because before I go to bed, I know I shouldn't eat a chocolate bar, but I want to, it tastes good, I do it, and then afterwards I feel a little guilty for doing it. And actually that, that's one that I do eat right there. That, that's my latest guilty pleasure right there is that uh, Milka Oreo bar. Uh, so again, we use that, that sometimes it's not emphasized, it gives us some information because it's telling us how often something happens. But, but it's not something that, that's emphasized in the sentence. So with that, because it's telling us how often something happens, the first one that I wanna to talk to you about are frequency adverbs. And when you're learning adverbs, these are like some of the first adverbs that, that we would learn, frequency, adverbs of frequency, because they tell us how often something happens, but again, even though we find them in the middle position most of the time, right here, they may also be used in the initial position or the final position. These adverbs are, are, are pretty flexible as to where they go in the sentence. And again, it, it's not so much trying to learn, well, this is where I'm always going to use it. It's a matter of just practicing, getting exposed through reading and listening and doing lessons like this so that, that you just start to internalize the information and just start using it correctly on your own. So again, you should pro you're probably familiar with those adverbs of frequency, always, usually, often, sometimes, rarely, never. And as an example, this is true. We always ask you to write to us in the comments. And I just noticed right there, I made a mistake. You can see it. It should say write to us in the comments not right to use <laughs> in the comments. So again, you guys can, it's something we always ask. We always ask you to write to us in the comments. We also always ask you guys to, to hit that like button right there. We always appreciate it. Um, right now I only see oh, 23 likes. All right, come on guys, come on, <laughs> keep it going. Um, let's, uh, let's look at the next one, all right? So you can also find in the middle position uh, degree adverbs. And these degree adverbs tell us the intensity of something. So it, 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 I'll, uh, you, you're, I'm sure you know these like really, very, so, quite, extremely, barely. I'll tell you something, they're very common in spoken English. We use them in speaking all the time. Often when, when as a teacher and I'm teaching, uh, especially not only adverbs, but trying to help build vocabulary, I always tell students maybe try to avoid something. So instead of saying things are, oh, very good, use a word that, that captures that. And like, instead of saying very good, say great, amazing, incredible, and just use a single word that, that captures it without having to use that adverb. That's something that I especially tell students in their writing. I think it's very useful to, to kind of not use as many of these in their writing, but it is so important in speaking because we use them a lot in just regular everyday conversation. And for example, I'm so tired after working all day. So again, you would find these degree adverbs in mostly in the middle position. One thing I wanted to say is that the degree adverbs, when you say a lot or a bit, those often go in the final position. I know I talk about things and use a lot 
quite regularly, something happens a lot. And when you're using that, it, it's often going to go at the final position and not the middle position. But many of these other d degree adverbs you will find in the middle position. Also, th this is just a sample. These are not all of the adverbs of degree. I just picked some that I thought are more common and, and that you use more regularly. So let's look at another rule of thumb, all right? And this is kind of taking us to the, the final position. And it just says most adverbs are found at the final position of the main clause or even the sentence, especially if you're talking about just a simple sentence that has a subject and a verb, such as the one I gave you that example, the children run quickly. So m most adverbs that we use, you're, you're gonna find them in that final position after the verb and it's an adverb that is modifying the verb and, and telling us more about that action. The children run quickly. Of course, that, that is my main clause. That is a complete thought. Of course, you can, you can often add to sentences, in, in which case it's still gonna be at the end of the main clause, but you can add on top of that and you could say the children run quickly when the school bell rings and you can add a dependent clause on there. So make it a complex sentence, but it really depends on the sentence type, but especially when you're talking about a simple sentence, the main clause, you have a subject, a verb, uh, often adverbs might will be found in that final position. So let's talk about some types of adverbs that are found in the final position. First, we have manner adverbs. and. This, such as that example sentence, it, it tells us how something is happening. It modifies that verb. They're often found in the final position, but they may be used in the middle position as well. I will, I will tell, show you that in just a moment. So you have these manner adverbs like something happens carefully, it happens slowly, it happens quickly, easily, badly, loudly, sadly. And my example sentence, they talked about their feelings openly. We can use that at the end of that, uh, at that sentence, and it's saying how they talked. They talked about their feelings openly. Now again, you can use, you can take that manner adverb, and I think it's, I think it's just as common that you might hear someone say they, they talked openly about their feelings. You can also put it between the subject and the verb and say, yeah, they openly talked about their feelings. And I think this is where people can get a little confused, where you have this one word that can go here and here and here. And I, I know as a language learner, people want to know, like, just, just tell me one place to put it. And that's where I'm going to put it. And again, don't worry so much about thinking, well, this is what it has to be like. It's all about getting exposure with reading and listening. And like I said, lessons like this, so, so that you learn a little bit more and, and get that exposure. So the next time you're having that conversation or you're writing that email or whatever you're doing, you'll just start using them correctly um, because it's gonna be like, oh, okay, I, I know I can use it here. I know I can use it here. So let's look at some more time adverbs. This is, these are other words that I, I'm pretty sure you're probably familiar with because they tell us when something happens. And often you find them in that final position, today, tomorrow, yesterday, a while ago at night now. But again, they may be used in the initial position as well if we want to emphasize it. Because a very common sentence we might say is, we eat breakfast in the morning. You're, you're saying when this happens. We eat breakfast in the morning. Now, if I want to put that in the initial position, I can. And I would say, in the morning, we eat breakfast. And by putting it in the initial position, again, just recognize that it does add a little more emphasis to, to that adverb by saying, well, this, this is important. In the morning is important. So most of the time you're gonna find it at the final position at the end, but it can be used in the beginning of the sentence, especially if you want to add a little bit of emphasis to, to what you're trying to say. So 
Now you're familiar a little bit more with the, the different positions where you might find these adverbs in the initial position, the middle position, or the final position. So I, I do want to practice using some of these and, and do that. But first, I just want to have a little fun. You can have a little fun with adverbs as well. And here are these two questions. Does Wes work hard? Does Wes hardly work? So this is one I always would go into a classroom and joke with students and say, are you working hard or are you hardly working? And sometimes students would think about that and say, hmm, uh, working hard, because they are actually two different adverbs, two different meanings, that the adverb hard, you're, you're, you're doing something with a lot of effort and energy, or hardly, which is almost a little bit of the opposite, means you know very, very little. So you can work hard or you can hardly work. They're opposites, but it's a little fun with, with wordplay. You can ask, ask somebody that, uh, are, you, are you working hard or are you hardly working? So it's fun. I just wanted to share that with you guys. I also wanted to share that we are on Patreon now, so you can check us out there. We have some very cool rewards and I will leave a link in the description. So. Let's look at, let's, let's practice using some of these adverbs. So I'm going to give you a, a sentence and I kind of want you to think, well, what, notice where the adverb is and then what type of adverb do you think it is and, and kind of what word would you use to fill in the blank? And of course, there's more than one word that you could use. So let's practice using these adverbs. So the first one is right here, okay? It is at the beginning of the sentence. Way over there, I have those different types of adverbs that we talked about in this lesson. Conjunctive adverbs, evaluative viewpoint, frequency, degree, manner, time. Wh which type of adverb do you think this is? Write it in the chat and also fill in that blank. What, what, what word would you use to go in that blank? Mm hmm, the earth is round and not flat. So what, what type of adverb do you guys think we should put in there? Let, let me know in the chat. So it's at the beginning of the sentence. And I told you when it's at the beginning, that, that's going to help us give a little more emphasis to it. So we, we talked about two adverbs at the beginning, conjunctive adverbs and evaluative viewpoint. So this is obviously expressing a, a viewpoint. Uh, you guys should have said viewpoint. And the word that I would have put in there is obviously. Obviously, the earth is round and not flat. It is an evaluative viewpoint adverb. What about, so remember again, the, the important thing, one important thing that I wanted you to take away from this lesson, if if that adverb is in the initial position, there is a little more emphasis that 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 information is important. All right. Let's look at the next one. Um, <laughs> I saw that image and I was like, OK, I'm just going to try to find a way to incorporate that in one of the lessons. So I mm, pick my nose. What what kind of adverb do you think that is? Again, it's coming between the the subject and the verb so what what kind of what kind of adverb do you think that is and then what what would you guys put in there if you're going to fill out <laughs> if you're going to share share with us and and put that put an adverb in there which adverb would you use so we're we're talking about it goes between the subject and the verb um it's, it is a frequency adverb. Uh, yes, I mean, so you put frequency in there. That is perfect. And <laughs> getting some interesting answers. Some people usually, always, hardly, occasionally. Um, <laughs> someone, I got one. Excellent. Rarely, usually. Um, what I just put in there, you know, I sometimes pick my nose. Uh, it's an adverb of frequency. And again, you know, this is something I, I think it's just natural. I think we all, everybody does it, whether they would admit it or not. Um, it's no big deal. So let's look at the next one. The next one, um, he spoke mm, during his testimony. Now, th this one, it's not, not tricky, I think, but what, what do you guys think that is? What type of adverb 
And then what word could, could go in there? If you're thinking about that situation, you're in a courtroom and somebody is speaking, it is talking about how they speak. Now, I would say that I, I've added some information that during his testimony, you, you could just take that out and say, he spoke, mm, and that is your main clause, that is your sentence. You're talking about how someone spoke. So what, what type? I think some of you said, yes, we're talking about how somebody spoke it, it is an adverb of, it is a manner adverb. And I would say, he spoke honestly during his testimony. He spoke honestly. So this is, this is again, this is great information. It, you guys are here, you're practicing. This is the best way to learn. A instead of thinking about it like, oh, I have to learn a rule. Don't think about it like that. Just, just practice these adverbs and understand that they don't always have to go in just one position in a sentence. They are a little flexible and you can use them in different ways. And the more you practice, the more you listen, the more you read, then, then the better you are going to become. And it's really going to help you improve your fluency skills. And on a side note, if you really want to improve your fluency skills, check out our secret lesson. I've linked it down below. So check out our secret lesson, which is going to help you. It is 10 ways to help you master English fluency. You can click on the link and truly become a part of the interactive English community. And we will email you that lesson. Link is in the description. So check that out. Thank you guys so much for watching. As always, please like and share this lesson. If you have questions, write to us in the comments because we just love hearing from you guys. This is such an amazing community and we're so happy to have you guys with us and join us for these lessons. We really appreciate it. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Thank you, Fabio, Junior, Molly, Giselle, um, Mr. Sam. Thank you guys so much. Um, sorry if uh, I've missed some names. Um, Everest, uh, Alereza, Sandra, uh, Aiden, Tham, Tan Tan, Wafi, everything you want. Excellent. AKM, Ravi, Dejan. Um, thank you guys for being here and checking out this lesson. Keep practicing, keep watching. It's really, that's really what's gonna help you improve your English the most. Thank you guys for being here and I will see you next time.